in 1980, California had 16 million Caucasians. It still has 16 million Caucasians 28 years later. In the meantime, the number of Latinos and Asians have both tripled. And yet, our systems, our models for mental health delivery were largely based on systems of care models created in the 1980s before this uh, dramatic change in, in the ethnic makeup of our society has taken place. Y cuando nació mi primer hija, um, yo quedé con depresión postparto. Y, este, y yo no sabía lo que era. Um, yo estaba más triste, más triste, más triste. Mi relación con el papá de mi hija era también muy violenta. Este, entonces mi depresión fue aumentando. We, in our communities, many of our people have been struggling with, uh, with, with survival. And, and receiving mental health services, unfortunately, has been a luxury because we haven't received appropriate physical health services. Um, a los pocos meses de que mi hija había nacido, quedé embarazada de mi segundo hijo sin haber tratado mi depresión. Uh, quedé embarazada también con Joshua, pasó lo mismo. Este, mm, nació Joshua, seguí yo con mi depresión a un punto de que intenté quitarme la vida. So when you look then at the mental health system, you discover that while Latinos make up 30% of Medi-Cal enrollees and over 40% of people eligible for Medi-Cal, they represent only 10% of the Medi-Cal recipients that are receiving public mental health system services. So clearly it jumps out at you as one of the most dramatic statistics that we have to overcome. Este, hice varias llamadas y todos me contestaban en inglés y todos eran para grupos de apoyos en inglés. Yo andaba buscando apoyo para mi esposa, que ella no habla inglés, habla puro español. When you refer to these populations, it's hard to serve. That's all from a different perspective. I mean, I don't think they're hard to serve. No vemos el mundo como las personas normales lo ven. Es difícil. Es muy difícil vivir en esquizofrenia, pero lo más difícil, difícil para mí que ha sido la esquizofrenia es las voces que me, que me hablan. I, I worked with those communities for a long time. I lived there. I survived there. Um, I, I grew up with an agricultural background. I don't think they're hard to serve. I think that there's a different perspective. I don't think that those communities oppose the message. I think they, they, they oppose the way that the message is delivered. El para entender qué es lo que está sucediendo y al entender la enfermedad de su esposa, cómo ha cambiado la situación. He visto los cambios de mi esposa. Um, sí hemos notado de que hay mucha falta que hace para la comunidad hispana más que nada. Este, y yo con ella quiero también ayudar a la comunidad hispana. ¿verdad? Ese es un nuevo amanecer y, y existe para toda la gente. No hay discriminación aquí. Um, fui a ver a mi doctora y ella me dijo que, que era depresión postparto. Y yo no sabía qué era eso. Ella me empezó a dar medicina y me refirió con una, con una psiquiatra. Um, for us, you know, uh, mental health or salud mental is, estás loco. And uh, it, 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 there is no in between. Um, so for us, there's a, a different set of stigmas associated with mental health, not only in terms of, of mental health conditions and illness, but also uh, services that are being received. You know, for Silvia, a lot of it is, is rooted in, not in the fact that I think she was a consumer, but I think a lot of it before that was rooted in the fact that she couldn't access things because she didn't speak the language. Um, or she didn't have a certain understanding of how things worked. Um, automáticamente me tuve que ir a vivir a un shelter con mis hijos. Eso fue otro trauma grandísimo para los bebés. Um, ellos no entendían por qué teníamos que vivir con muchas otras familias y no tener nuestro propio espacio. Um, you know, you have uh, systems and structures in place in, in Anglo communities that support families and support consumers. But those systems don't exist in our community. Bueno, aquí en la ciudad de Santa Bárbara eh, recurrimos a varias dependencias públicas y privadas eh, sin éxito. Tocamos muchas puertas y siempre se nos cerraban las puertas. <música>
el trámite eh, algo burocrático, algo lento, puesto que traíamos a Marcos eh, completamente mal y nos lo pusieron a llenar un, un formulario, o sea, es eh, ilógico eh, completamente, un formulario, un, y además sientes ahí, espere, llene un formulario grande, él por supuesto negado a la enfermedad, no quería aceptarlo, no quería entrar, no, eh, lo yo lo traje engañado, entonces se dio cuenta de qué se trataba, pues después de 15 minutos de estar esperando, llenando un formulario, se salió por la puerta de atrás, tiró el formulario a la basura. Pero fui y pedí ayuda para, para regresar a la escuela, para agarrar mi certificado uh, como consejera, porque tenía en mente um, estudiar como consejera de alcohol y drogas. Um, la persona que me hizo la entrevista me dijo, oh, nosotros aquí no, no ayudamos para que ustedes regresen a la escuela. Y ayudamos para que regreses a trabajar, pero no para regresar a la escuela. Yo lo que siempre pienso y lo que creo es esto. Nosotros, para poder ayudar, tenemos que trabajar en nosotros mismos. De otras formas no podemos hacer nada. Pero me da un gran gusto y me hace sentir bien de que estamos aquí reunidos, de que estamos encontrando soluciones y sobre todo el hecho de poder abrirnos nosotros mismos y poder expresar uh, lo que sentimos. Ah, me ha ayudado mucho, me he sentido un poquito bien, un poquito mal. He tenido caídas, pero, pero el ánimo de, de seguir viniendo aquí y saber que hay gente que me necesita, porque mi meta es llegar a ayudar a gente. And I think that that is the concept that I think a lot of other professions have learned. You see that in public health, you see that in other areas, pregnancy prevention work and HIV work. You see effective models of, of working with campesinos and working with in, in HIV. I mean, and you want to talk about a stigma-laden uh, issue. Those issues really are laden with a lot of stigma. And the messages have been delivered appropriately. So there's effective ways of reaching out to these communities in other areas. Uh, for some reason, we haven't adopted that in mental health. We seem to think that we have to start all over, when in reality there's a lot of models that have, are effective in outreaching to these communities. This is the problem with, with uh, the way things have, have been done. In all publicly funded programs, we are silo-driven. You have this box of money that can pay for this box of services, and that we tend to respond to the boxes, as opposed to responding to the people. And what we want is a client and family-centered system. We're saying, okay, what do you need? Okay, what will benefit you? What will get you the right results? And this money can pay for whatever is going to get you the right results, no matter how untraditional it may look. Well, you know, I think that part of it is, and again, in the spirit of it, I just say, it needs to be, and, and I've said this at, at countless state meetings, is that you you need representation. And by representation, I mean that reflects the communities that you're serving or that you're supposed to serve. Um, a lot of the meetings that I've gone to, they don't reflect the community um, statewide. I mean, if you look at the demographics statewide, this, uh, a a any meeting associated with MHSA should look pretty diverse. It should have a significant number of, of, of Native people, Asian people, African American, Latinos, and, and whites. It's clear that we are not engaging these populations, and the ways we go about engaging people in the past won't work. We clearly are going to have to go to where the people are. Um, they're going to be in schools. They're going to be in primary care clinics. They're going to be in churches, and they're going to be in other places that people go for problems that they have. The unfortunate part is, uh, like, uh, like a lot of our Latino communities, the times when we begin to see them in our mental, in accessing mental health services is not unfortunately a, a walk-in voluntary type of situation. It's a hospital, ER, uh, you know, law enforcement, it's, it's one of these things. And, and I think that, that that's unfortunate because that speaks volumes again to our inability and what we need to do as providers to provide access to individuals because um, it, it should not be the only gateway by which 
uh, uh, certain groups and certain communities come through our doors. If the families are stressing because of their um, documents or because not having a social security or because uh, they don't speak the language, that's, that's very difficult. Those are huge stressors. Um, homeless people, especially Latino, I mean, when you go and apply for an apartment, the first thing that they ask you is a social number, social security number. Um, some of the places when you go to a clinic, the first thing that they ask you is a social security number. I mean, it's like if you don't have a social, you don't get services, or that's a huge um, stressor. And again, um, people from the community uh, who are consumers and are family members um, understand that community. And again, they don't fear that community. They don't think it's hard to serve. They don't think it's hard to reach. They live there. Hopefully with workforce and training and education, you begin to see other opportunities that are afforded not only to consumers and family members who are of diverse backgrounds, but also a, a, a great number of us who have undergraduate degrees and nobody talked to us about graduate programs. Um, I'm hoping that departments are looking at as opportunities for these paraprofessionals who have bachelor's degrees who are working in mental health or in social services as an opportunity to, to recruit and to go back to school and, and get a license. I'm doing, presently doing peer recovery specialist in Santa Maria, uh, which is um, a client or consumer run program uh, and it's out of Mental Health Services Act. And um, our team is called Partners in Hope. Uh, we don't ask them if they have social security number. We don't ask them if they're legal. We don't ask them. We only help them, listen to them. And if they need referrals, we do um, offer referrals. Until we have that deep pool of, of providers that have those uh, 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 cultural and linguistic capabilities, um, the community is going to be uh, is not going to be knocking on our door a whole lot. And if they do, what's the point if they knock on the door and you tell them that they have to be on a waiting list until, you know, uh, you know, Refugio Rodriguez uh, whittles down his waiting list? <laughs>